Hi, it's Gwen from Hummingbird Tarot, and today's video I'm talking about the difference between Rider Waite Smith, Thoth, and Tarot de Marseille. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified every week when I upload a new video. So the three decks that I'm looking at today, Universal Tarot of Marseille, that is representing the Tarot de Marseille deck, Tarot de Marseille, Tarot de Marseille. There's lots of different ways to say it. Um, I'm also looking at the Universal Weight deck for the Rider Waite Smith. And then I'm looking at the Alistair Crowley Thoth Tarot deck. If you have a preference of the three decks, which one you prefer, let me know in the comments and let me know why that one is your favorite. All three versions of this deck, not necessarily the same exact version that I have, but you can find the Thoth Tarot, um, you can find the Universal Weight Tarot, and you can find the Tarot de Marseille all on Amazon very easily by just doing a quick search. And these are three different systems that a lot of decks are based on, and sometimes it can be confusing to try to figure out what the difference between those decks are uh, to help you decide which system you'd like to follow. The majority of the decks that you buy these days are based off of the Rider Waite Smith. That just seems to be the most popular version that most people are using. But the Tarot de Marseille, or Tarot de Marseille, has been around for a very long time. In around the 15th century, it was used for playing games. And it's really the first deck that was used for divination. And I'm gonna show you this is the deck that I'm looking at today, the Universal Tarot of Marseille, and this is by Claude Burdell and Lee Burston. This is a low Scarabeo deck. And if you look at the images, this is the Major Arcana. You can see these look very, they look like they came right out of the 15th century. And you'll see some of these images may make you think, if you're familiar with the Rider Waite Smith and the Major Arcana there, some of these images may make you think of some of those. But then when you get into the suits, these are pip cards. And a pip card is something that doesn't have a situation in it. It just has objects. So you'll see that cups, there's, there's one cup there, and then two cups, three cups, four cups. So to read this, you kind of got to know your numerology. You can read it intuitively. I find it hard to do uh, without knowing numerology. And if you look at some of the other suits, there's the pentacles. They're just they're just discs. And there's some more. When you're talking about the you're talking about the wands, that's what the wands look like. You know, they do have, the court cards are again, people, but there's often still very little of a situation to interpret there. Um, here's a sword, additional swords. So a pip deck would be when there's just objects, there's no situation listed in there. And there are some people that are very passionate about the Marseille deck, and that's when they like to read. This is only one version of many of the Marseille decks that are out there. And for it, a deck to be based on the Marseille deck, it would have to have pip cards, so um, non-situation cards, and then they have similar imagery. It's fancy and frilly and looks very similar to this. Now you do have some tarot decks that have what are considered pip cards, where they just have objects for each of uh, the suit cards, uh, except for the court cards. And those wouldn't be considered based on Marseille unless they have uh, the imaging similar to this. They would just be considered a pip deck. So then in about 1909, you have um, the Rider Waite Smith deck. Rider was the printer, Arthur Waite and is the one who commissioned Pamela Coleman Smith, both of who were members of the Golden Dawn for the Rider Waite Smith deck. And this is the most popular version um, 
So in 1909, I believe right around 1909 is when this deck came out and it's kind of caused a resurgence of tarot and this deck being used. And if you look at the, see the cups and all of these different suit cards, which is similar to the Marseille, there's different suits, four different suits. Uh, these all have situations in them. And it's a little easier to tell a story if you can see that there's something that's happening in each of those uh, cards to give you a little bit more information to go off of and interpret what you think might be happening in the deck. And then finally, Alistair Crowley, a Golden Dawn member, worked with Frida Harris, who was also a Golden Dawn member, and she's the one who illustrated the deck. Now, the difference is that Alistair Crowley took the tarot deck a step further. This is based uh, very much on traditional images as well. You will see a lot of similarities in the Thoth deck as compared to the images that you'll see in Rider Waite Smith um, in some of the images, but Alistair Crowley wasn't satisfied with the deck that Arthur Waite had put together and took this a step further. He's got Hebrew letters, there are astrological symbols, occult references, there's ancient Egyptian references in there. Um, and this deck is a little pippish as well. So th these are the cups for uh, the Thoth deck. And there aren't really situations going on here. However, the cards are different enough from each other. Uh, and if you look, at, there are symbols and other information in there that you could use to interpret. So this is a different interpretation of the tarot. This came out in 1944 and he added a lot more of the occult into the tarot deck. And if you compare the Rider Waite Smith deck against the Thoth deck, you'll see that the Rider Waite Smith deck is a little easier for the everyday person to read. You don't have to know a whole lot about the occult. You don't have to know um, a whole lot about any of the, the symbols that they studied and the secret information that they studied uh, that has to do with the occult as members of the Golden Dawn. The general public can fairly easily read the Rider Waite Smith deck. And Alistair Crowley wanted to make a deck that took a little bit more knowledge to read. Now you don't have to know all of those things. You can read the Thoth deck just intuitively. You can get a book and study it a little bit better. However, if you're well versed on uh, astrological symbols, Hebrew letters, and the Egyptian influences in the deck, it really adds another layer uh, to reading tarot that doesn't exist in the Rider Waite Smith deck. And there are people that are very passionate about the Thoth deck. Uh, typically, people choose one system or the other that they stick with. There are those rare people that read multiple versions of it, and my hat's off to them. It's like speaking multiple languages. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's very easy. I haven't found it very easy to pick up uh, the different systems of tarot and just get, you know, hit the ground running, you really have to spend a lot of time studying each of the systems to know them really well if you're going to study them based on the traditional meanings. Uh, if you just want to read intuitively, you can read that way with any deck. However, learning the traditional meanings, the background of the deck creators, and all of that other information adds another layer and another depth to your reading that might not exist otherwise. So that's a quick overview of the differences between the three main systems, the Tarot de Marseille, the Rider Waite Smith, and the Thoth deck. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any other questions you'd like to ask that are tarot related, feel free to leave a message in the comments. I will see you on the next time around. If you have anything you want to share with me, please, please feel free to comment on any of the decks that I shared with you. If you'd like to see a full walkthrough of anything, go ahead and ask for that in the comments too. I'd be happy to oblige. Thanks for stopping by.